All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Mallsburg panel. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. And joining us now, our friend uh, Peter Morisi, Newsmax contributor, uh, economist, and professor at the University of Maryland. And C. Edmund Wright, you read him at American Thinker, Breitbart.com, and also his fine books. And uh, gentlemen, welcome. Nice Glad to be here, Steve. All right, let's start uh, with you, uh, Peter. The uh, the uh, resignation uh, of the head of the Veterans Administration, which the president uh, regrettably uh, accepted. Uh, it, I mean, it just it just is the M.O. This guy cannot be forceful, cannot look like he's in charge. This was forced upon him. Uh, he even gave the reason why Shinseki gave for resigning, said it makes sense. I, I regret accepting it. it I, I, I just can't, you know, this guy doesn't know what the meaning of the word lead is. Well, the president has absolutely failed as a CEO. He's put in place subordinate ma managers for political reasons. You know, this is what happens when you have an administration where every decision is a political decision. Every decision is a campaign decision. There's no concept in the White House about what it takes to run an organization or good government. You know, if it doesn't victimize a Republican, take away the tax return of a conservative, somehow or other make an enemy of Nancy Pelosi, and the world is full of enemies to Nancy. If it doesn't do any of those things, it doesn't matter. Well, running the government has nothing to do with being a liberal or conservative. It has to do with sound management and hiring a constitutional law professor who spent most of the last 20 years running for office and never running anything is a fool's journey into madness. And Ed Edmund, uh, you know, we'll get to whether or not this does any good in a second, but uh, what'd you think of the way the announcement was handled? I mean, Tim Camp earlier uh, said, regret, regret? That, that was a quote from him. Yeah, I thought, I thought the president was madder than hell about all this. Uh, you, you would think if that were the case that, that he would have almost taken a little bit of pleasure in, in, uh, you know, in chopping off the head of the snake. Uh, but the fact of the matter is what he did was he accepted the resignation of the top bureaucrat, but you still have below it this massive corrupt bureaucracy, which really defines our entire life if, you know, if if the Obama, Pelosi, Reid liberals get their way, this is how they want to run everything in our lives, and and uh, and, and we don't need that. All right. So, does it do any good, Edmund, or 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 not? Obviously, uh, nothing immediately uh, going to happen. Uh, uh, the the guy in charge, at least temporarily, has been uh, been in that uh, in that uh, department for three months. No, it, it doesn't do any good as far as the veterans go. It may be a very tiny you know, PR help to Obama, but again, because he was so tepid, as, as the professor mentioned, it even took most of that away. You know, I've been a federal and manager. You gotta remember, I was in the SES at the highest level, the senior executive service. I had the highest level a civilian employee can have without being a political appointee. And the institutional resistance because of the unions inside of the government, and also the rules the Congress has mandated to try to avoid corruption, have actually propagated corruption in, of yes. the worst kind. You know, we read about bureaucrats that get nothing done. Well, that's what you have here is bureaucrats that couldn't run uh, the Veterans Administration properly, run a waiting list, and see to it that there were adequate medical services, communicate with Congress about the needs for resources. So what they did was they resorted to covering up the fact that they were incompetent. No, this is emblematic of the way the government runs whether it's the government printing office or the IRS or what have you. Uh, they, they go into this uh, bomb shelter mentality whenever there's criticism. And where's Eric Holder? I mean, people have falsified reports so they could get bonuses. Last I heard, that's criminal fraud, a lie for financial gain. But you know, just like with the uh, uh, BP Horizon thing, they're gonna go after any private actors they can find, certainly any Republicans they can prosecute. But go after incompetent civil servants, but dishonest ones that steal from us and from the veterans? No, because after all, they vote Democratic. Right. Well, Edmund, you'd have to prove uh, you'd have to prove before Eric Holder will go after the uh, aforementioned uh, that these were white civil servants and uh, their actions affected uh, blacks adversely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Perhaps you're right, Steve. Uh, oh, fact, that's low. The fact of the matter is, bureaucrats lied and veterans died. And again, uh, we saw with the IRS, bureaucrats lied within there and 501c3s died. I mean, this is what bureaucrats do. They protect other bureaucrats. They don't necessarily protect their mission. 
This is tyranny. All right, That's let's a, uh, t get, this is tyranny. Go ahead, go ahead, Peter. It's absolute yeah, tyranny. Yeah, the government is is systematically it's created a system that targets people that really don't view the liberal line. After all, you know, it's remember in the elections they didn't really want to have a lot of absentee ballots from military folk because we know how they would yeah. vote, right? Well, now it's the military folks that have need. No, the man talks the talk, but he doesn't walk the walk. He says he care, cares about veterans, but he puts uh, a 71-year-old in there for reasons of political correctness who can't manage the situation, uh, and now they wonder what's gone wrong. He doesn't give a tinker's damn about the welfare of Americans' veterans. He just doesn't any more than he gives a tinker's damn about freedom of religion, what he's done with Obamacare with the Catholic hospitals. All right, let me let me ask you guys, uh, what do you think of uh, of Jay Carney uh, when he leaves in June? You're going to miss him, uh, Edmund? <laughs> yeah, I'll miss the comic relief. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, I, I thought, I, I don't know, I, I would watch Jay Carney's performance and, and I would just wonder, man, how does this guy live with himself at night? I mean, he was just, he was just a just shameless sycophantic and, and maybe i'm being a little harsh because he looks so boyish or whatever uh it's uh you know it, it was just incredible uh what he would say with a straight face uh you know about all the obama scandals about the economy about everything peter well, I'm, I, I'm not going to miss him because they're just going to replace him with someone like him you know they just <laughs> manufacture people like this in america's colleges and universities I can take you to the University of Maryland probably in a half hour, come up with 10, uh, you know, substitutes for Jay Carney, serving on committees who sound eruditious and so forth. You know, what's really sad as an economist, I've been watching, uh, you know, Jason Furman, uh, you know, spin things, shall we say. Well, you know, they get to the point like on the minimum wage where, you know, this is like a, this is, some of the stuff that comes out of their mouths is like a physician saying smoking doesn't matter. You know, they just make right, it up we, as we, they we, all right, guys, we're, we're going to come back. We haven't even gotten to Hillary yet, so that's coming up in part two. The, uh, the book excerpt that was uh, leaked today uh, regarding Benghazi. And, folks, if you want to let us know what you think about today's hot topics, here's how you could do it.